Hey guys, and welcome to episode 24 of Serganan's Feed the Beast Season 3 Let's Play. I'm here in my base, and I keep running into a problem. Uh, ugh, lag. Every time I cross this little area right here, I get tons of lag. I don't know what it is. But over here, I moved my farm just a little bit uh, over this direction and that's because I want to use this little bit of land right here. So I have my ender seeds and I also have my ender lilies. My golems can harvest my ender lilies but they won't replant. So I want to take care of that. But first what I actually want to do is take care of the Ender seeds from magical crops. Now this will work with any magical crops. I'm just using ender seeds because that's what I have. So the first thing, see what I mean? Right there. Bunch of lag. So bear with the, the lag, sorry about that. So the first thing that I'm going to want to do is find a way to harvest the magical crops. Worst case, if I plant them by myself, you know, then, and it auto-harvests, my golems will pick them up and I can replant them. And that's kind of what I've been doing with the ender lilies. I did find a, a few more ender lilies in, um, I've been scrounging around in some dungeons trying to, to find some loot, so... I did find more ender lily seeds. Nothing else really of major importance though. So what I'd like to do is just go with the basics. There's not a mod that'll help me take care of this. Not really. So the basics, what would you use to automate collecting your crops? In vanilla Minecraft, normally you would use water. So that's what I'm going to do in this case. But I want it to be automated. So I'm going to make one more sticky piston. So there's a piston and I should be able, I should have some, uh, yeah, some slime balls here. So I have two sticky pistons and what I want to set up I'm going to need a few more stone bricks. Uh, we're just to... Just to make sure that I have a good amount. That should be okay. Let's go out here and set this up. And I'm only going to make this five long for a couple of reasons. One, because of the amount of seeds that I'm going to need. And two, just for proof of concept. Uh, once I get everything working, it's not going to be hard for me just to extend it a few. So the first thing that I'm going to want is I actually want my pistons to be right uh, let's see. I want them right here against the wall. So that one's placed right. Let me see if I can get this one placed. Oops. Nah, that's kind of what happens. This thing mines so fast. Okay, there we go. And then I'm going to put these here. And we should be able to grab a lever out of our pack here. And make these push out. So there we go. So now they grabbed hold of them. And this is going to basically be the 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 uh, water flow position. I want the water to basically be right here. So I'm going to set up the rest of this before we do anything else. So I'm going to want the water flow right here, which means I don't really need this here. That was just really to keep my golems in anyway. And let's see. So the water blocks are going to be right here. And just for right now, 
let's go ahead and push those pistons back out. And I'm just going to use levers for right now. Oh, that pushed them both. That works. And so I'm going to need some way to contain the water here. Okay, and I'll just clean this up. And this one. Because I still need to access in here. So if I go and get some water, oh, I do have water already. And just for right now to hop up here, I can throw my water in here. So far, we're just using vanilla. Now, what will happen is when I give it the right signal, this will go ahead and retract, water will flow, and then it'll close up. And all of my plants and seeds and everything should be down here ready for my golems to collect it. Now, I picked up my golems because I don't really want them in the way while I'm building this, and I don't want them to pick up anything that, you know, that I'm working with, and, and then they throw it in my AE system. So, this part is done. The harvesting basically is done, except now we need to know when to harvest. And so we're going to use a item that we have not used before. And we're going to use a mod that we haven't really touched on either. So first, the item that we haven't used before. I'm going to use a block update detector, advanced. Now, there's three different types of block update detectors, basically, with this pack. There's the regular block update, update detector with extra utilities. It can tell when a block is placed down or when something's broken, or something like that. It's not very smart. The detector from Artifice is basically the same thing as the block update detector. However, the block, this uh, advanced block update detector, what it will do is not only will it tell if something's placed or picked up, you know, a block update, it will also detect uh, growth in plants. It will also detect items in inventories. Um, if those change, it, it will detect all of that. So that's what we need. So the first thing we're going to need is the block update detector. So I'm going to need a couple more sticky pistons. Now I only really need three of these for the start. And some stone. Now I already have some stone cooking up. Let's see if we have everything we need for the sticky pistons. So there's three pistons. And I should be able to... One, two, three. Perfect. And I bet you I don't have the torches. You know what, I'm just going to make a whole bunch because I know I'm going to need them. Why is it not doing this? Let's try it manually. So we have our pistons. We do our redstone torches, a little bit of redstone. And we're going to need some stone. Here and here. And that'll get us our three update detectors. And we want the advanced version. And so we're going to need a little bit more stone and some redstone. Let's see if this works. No. Okay. Uh, but we need blocks of redstone. Luckily, I have plenty of blocks. And some more stone. And three. So, like I said, these will detect plant growth. 
And basically every time the plant moves another stage, it will go ahead and emit a redstone signal, just a pulse. And the reason that I want three is because I want to make sure that uh, within reasonable certainty that all of my plants have grown. So I want to put one here, one here, and one here. And that way, that will go ahead and make sure that at least the plants there, there, and there are fully grown before we harvest them. Now that's, it's not 100% foolproof, but it stands to reason that if those three are grown, chances are the rest of them are too. But we can't just do it off of that. Remember I said any growth will emit a redstone signal. So, what we need to do is make sure that they fully grow. I'm going to sleep through the night here. Okay, looks like that's going away. So, what I want to do is I actually want to count how many times the plants grow. Because these ender seeds take seven growth cycles before they're mature and ready to harvest. So, I want something that can count. So, a counter. This is what we haven't used before. This is from Project Red Integration. And Project Red adds a whole bunch of different circuits, basically, that we can use with redstone. It's really, really cool stuff. But in this case, what I want to use right now is the counter. So I'm going to need some circuit plates. Now, the reason that I was cooking up a whole bunch of stone is because if I take this stone and throw it back in the furnace, I will get my circuit plates. Right there. Really easy stuff. I'm going to need a couple of these, so I'm actually going to cook up quite a few and then I'll be back when we're ready to put it together. Okay, so I made over a stack of these circuit plates, and I'm going to need some of these other parts. Now, I'm going to need a pointer. Easy enough. And let's go ahead and make three of those, because I know I'm going to need three counters. I'm going to need some conductive plate, which is just the circuit plate and redstone. So let's go ahead and get... We'll just get a handful of them. I know we're going to use them in the future. And then these cathodes, which is just the circuit plate plus the redstone torch. And that's why I made a whole bunch of redstone torches. And we'll get a whole bunch of these. We'll say 12. So let's go ahead and make a counter. Three of them. And I'm also going to need some redstone. And I'm going to go ahead and grab this red alloy wire. Grab half a stack of redstone. And if I go out here, and I actually want to, you know, I can just hop over this one. I want to come over here. And let's place a block here, here, and here. Now, these update detectors, you have to put redstone. Down. You can't use this red alloy wire right next to them because, watch, I'll show you. Every time this pulses, it counts as an update. So this is constantly thinking that there's an update, which really doesn't help us. Because we need to be able to count the times that there actually is an update. So we'll go ahead and put one piece of redstone, and then from there, what we can do is... Go ahead and throw these down here. One, two, three. Now we can go ahead and put these counters down. And I'm going to throw one there, one here, and one here. Now, they're not really facing the right way. Actually, this one is... That one is... Well, I guess they are. Nope, that one's not facing the right way. So I can pick it up and re-angle it, or... There's one other item that goes with this mod that we don't have. And it's a tool used for these 
basically these circuits. And that is a screwdriver. Now, we already have the rotary craft screwdriver, but we need this Project Red Core screwdriver. Not hard to make. Just two lappies and a few iron. And if we go back out here, I just want to position this so that that's the negative input, output, positive. I want the positive input. So that way, every time this detects an update, it's going to add positively to the counter. And what we can do is if we just right click on this, you can see it has a maximum that it'll go to. Uh, an increment every time it receives a pulse, how many it counts up, and the state that it's at right now. So what I want to set this to is actually the maximum to 8, because I said that it takes 7 for it to fully grow, but remember, planting it counts as 1 too. So we want to set these all to 8 maximum, and we want to set this here, the decrement, up to 8. Now the decrement can never be higher than the maximum, so if I just hit this plus 10, it'll just set it. And so what'll happen now is if I grab a lever, which I should have some here, I can actually tell this here on the negative side. Just throw one piece down here and there you go we reset it back to zero and I'm not gonna do it with levers but eventually I will use something for that you know what this tree is just getting in the way go away tree no more trees So, one more, one more, and I know it's a, it's kind of complicated to do all this, but it's, it's really the best way for me to get this set up the way that I need it. And I'm going to do one here. Actually, I wonder if I can just do it straight off. And now I'm going to use the red alloy wire. Okay, looks like that does work. So I can just go right here. And then from here, I'm just going to go out this direction. Let's see, that's the negative, so I don't want to connect there. And I want to connect this one here. And this one here. There we go. So now they're basically converging on this block here. I might end up uh, moving this setup, making a little more compact uh, later off camera. But for right now, I just want to get the, the concept down. So there's one other thing. I want to make sure all three of those are done. So... I can use an AND gate, but I'm not going to build a big AND gate from vanilla. I'm going to use the Project Red AND gate. So we've already seen these cathodes. We have a few of those. We've already seen these conductive plates, and now we should be able to make anodes. And one should do just fine. And I want a AND gate. Now this AND gate has three inputs and an output. And you can configure it however you want. Um, you can configure it to only use two outputs, I believe. But in this case, I want to use all three. And I see I should be able to... This is the direction I want it anyway. And it's showing that...
Um, let's see. We should be able to hook right here. Yeah. And just go out this way. So basically what I want it to do is once all three lights are lit up, or once all three are done, that's when I want it to send the signal over here to release the water. And we're just go, I don't think, yeah, I can't connect there. You know what, I'm just going to break this one. Instead of going all the way around, just put a block there. And we go up this direction. But see, it's still turned off. So now the water is flowing, and now once they got all of the block updates, everything turned on, and the AND gate let its signal go. Hmm. You know what, I don't even need that there. Let me do this. If I pull out my saw, where's my saw? I wonder if it's in my system. Let me go grab my saw and I'll be right back. Okay, now you've seen me use covers before. But I can also make strips. And that's what I'm going to use here. Now both covers and strips will prevent these cables from connecting. Watch. I put one right here, see how they connect? But if I put a strip right here, that actually stops them from connecting. So what that'll allow me to do is make a little bit more uh, compact builds. Because now I don't need to go all the way around this here, and around this corner. I can just go right here. And that's, yeah, that's about as compact as I'm going to get it right this second. So now this will stop the water, and basically what will happen is if I hoe this ground, and this does not count as a block update because technically as far as the game's concerned, nothing actually changed. But what I can do now is I can plant stuff here, and when it hits 8 updates, it will go ahead and release the water. But you can see right now, right now it's already counted up to eight. And basically that's what's holding the water back. So there's one other gate that I want. And that is, more lag, that is a not gate. Because I want to reverse the signal. So, if I look up not gate here, oh, that was probably it right there. And I have everything but one cathode. So there we go, a not gate. And if we set this up in line, basically what this says is when the signal is not on, emit a redstone signal. And when the signal is on, don't emit a redstone signal. And I'm going to put this, hmm, I actually want to put this right here. And so in and out, so basically it reverses the signal. So now what we can do is I can take these levers and it's they're just pulsing because of the water and I want to reset them completely oh, that's not good I wonder if that was because of the water but, or it might be me jumping on it. So now, this will hold the water back until these are grown. 
So, proof of concept. Let's go ahead and plant some plants. And what this should do. Hmm, I might have to put another water source block down here. Yeah, let me just go ahead and pick up one of these, because I have two source blocks in here. I really only need one. Um, let's put it let's put it right here. And that way, these get watered too. Now, if we come over here to our counters, we should see that these are in state one. That means it's done one increment. And that's just because I planted the plants. So I'm going to give this a little bit of time, refill this here. And wait for these to count up a few, and I'll show you what I mean by the different stages. Now you can see a few of these have already grown. And this one knows that this is fully grown because it's at state 8 and emitting a redstone signal. So it knows that one is fully grown. This one here has only went through to stage 5. And then this one here is only on stage two. Now, remember, one stage is planting it. The rest are growth. Now, I went and replaced these with covers just because I figured this one, the reason that it's probably not growing as quickly is because of the light level. So hopefully those covers should take care of that. I just heard another tick. Yeah, see, this one just went up another stage. Now, visually, you can't see it. But these update detectors, the advanced ones, they can detect it. And it's just like wheat. Wheat will go up to 8 as well. So that'll take care of harvesting when it, you know, when they, when all three, at least these three grow. Now by the time this one grows, chances are this one will already be grown and those two will be grown. So even if that one right there in the corner is not fully grown, it's not a big deal. It's, like I said, I've been testing this build, and for the most part, it, it tends to get all of them. Now, once this releases the water, there's nothing to really stop it and, you know, put the water, uh, cut the water back off. And that's just because once these hit all the way to 8, they're just going to emit a redstone signal, and that's it. So then I have to come through and hit the levers and reset them. Well, there's two things that I'd like to do. One, I only want this to let the water out temporarily. And if it has a redstone signal constant, it's not really going to do it temporarily. It's going to let the water out and that's it. So there's another thing that we can do. Go ahead and run inside here. You know what, I was just thinking about it and there's actually one more thing that I need and that's a state cell. And the state cell is a little bit different. We should have everything we need for the pointer. And we should have everything except for that center funky looking one, the silicone chip. Now the silicone chip we need some infused silicone. So to get that, we need some red silicone compound, which is redstone around a piece of silicone. Well, to get that, we need to create a pool, which is just like this. And to get that, we need sandy coal compound. So we need sand around a block of coal. So let's get one block of coal. And go ahead and go through here. And get our sandy coal compound. Now we do need to cook this up. So I'll go ahead and do that, and actually, we'll just wait for that here, and then we just have to slice it. Why is it not working? I wonder if it needs to be a diamond saw. Let's see, we might have to use some diamonds here. Looks like it does have to be a diamond saw. Uh, 
Um, so I need a couple more stone rods. And the reason that I'm going through this way is so I don't have to relook it up. So we have our diamond saw. And that's fine. I can just have this one in my system as backup. And we want to cut this up here, and that'll get us eight. So more than we need. And I just need one of them, surrounded by redstone, to get the silicone compound. And then if I cook this up, then it'll get me the red silicone chip that I need. The infused silicone. And so now we should be able to take that there. And put everything together. To make our state cell. Okay. Now I'm going to use these two together. The state cell and the timer. Let me just make sure that... Looks like one of them opened up here. Why did that open up like that? Oh. Okay, so I need to stop that from growing. So I wonder if strip will stop that from growing here. Not good. It just knocked down half my plants. Well, at least we get proof, proof of concept. That worked. I got a couple of essence there. Well, we'll let this, this other row finish. And that should stop this moss from growing down. So what I want to do now is right here, I want to put my state cell. Now, what the state cell will do is with an input and an output here. Hmm. Yeah, I kind of want this a little differently. Let me go grab a little bit more of this red alloy wire, and I'm going to move this over one. Actually, before I even do that, let me just pick up my water. Okay, I'm going to go grab some red alloy wire, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I moved this over one, just so this connects nicely and what this will do what the state cell will do is if i set the interval the timer for two seconds when this receives a redstone signal on the in input it will go ahead and output a signal for two seconds and then it will reach this output that'll only be a pulse and that's exactly what i want it to do so what I need to do is make sure that this does not connect here. And now I want to go from this output, and I don't want it to connect there either. I'm probably going to need a couple more of these strips. Okay, I think I got it, but I'm probably going to need a couple more of these covers. And I'm just connecting them up this way. So that way, basically, um, when this hits this little post after the two seconds, it will shut off the water and then send a pulse. This way, going into the negative and basically resetting the counters. And by using covers, I'm able to go over my existing wire without messing with it. I'm just going right down into the negative. So it might look a little funky, and, and I understand that this is a, a complicated build. So, if you have to watch the, the video a couple times if you're following along, I'm sorry about that, but this is really, with this version of uh, Horizons, is the only way that I can get it. So, I'm going to let, looks like just these two are left. What are we looking at? So, this one still has two more to go. This one just has one right there. So, let's give this a little bit of time. I'm going to go ahead and record, um, but wait for it. And I'll show you what happens uh, when all of them are done growing. So as you can see, 
all of them have grown except for this center one, and it's on stage 7. So as soon as it hits stage 8, it should grow its flower and be ready to go. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to fly. And this is just for demonstration purposes. And once that one grows, we should see this last redstone signal turn on. That's going to go ahead and go into the state cell here, which is going to emit a redstone signal into the knot gate, releasing the water, but only for two seconds. After that two seconds is up, it's going to close off the water. And then what it'll do then is it'll put a redstone pulse going this direction, which will reset all three counters. So let's give this just a little bit of time, and I'll show you it all in action. And then unfortunately, uh, once we see it run at least once, or once we see it run once, then I think I am going to have to end this episode here. It, is running a little bit longer than I really wanted it to, but um, I want to show you this all work before we leave. Okay, looks like it did everything it was supposed to do. But for some reason, this didn't work. Why isn't this working? It's got the in signal here, and it should go for two seconds. There should be no lock signal right now. Well, between this episode and next, I'll go ahead and figure out what's going on with this state cell. It should have went and let the, the signal through just like it did. And then started counting. So I'm going to find out what's going on. And then also next episode, what we're doing is we we'll start uh, working on automatically replanting. I hope you guys enjoyed, and with that, I will see you guys later.